Hey, we're back, wrapping up what's chapter seven of the practice of statistics um, and CED five for AP stats. We are going to talk about difference of means today. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the ACT scores of two high schools. Um, here's the situation, ATC scores at Artery Kell High School are normally distributed with a mean of 26 and a standard deviation of three. And the ACT scores at Providence High School, school are skewed right. Um, with a mean of 25 and a standard deviation, or to mean of 25 and a standard deviation of five. Now, again, similar to what we did yesterday in terms of the distributions and how things work, and we're going to see how we can start to set up comparing two different things. And this will eventually get to the point where you can start saying, is this treatment better than another treatment? That type of thing. So, how do we do that? Here we go. So the first thing that we're going to go through and do is we're going to say we randomly select 25 students from AKHS and 30 from PHS. Um, the information given to you describe the um, sample distributions for both average ACT scores. So the shape, because AKHS has a normal population, then we can assume that the sample population is also going to be, um, the sample distribution is also going to be approximately normal. And for PHS, be, even though it's skewed, remember yesterday we said that as long as, by the central limit theorem, as long as the sample is of sufficient size, we can say that the distribution will be normal as well. And since 30 is greater than or equal to 30, then we can say that this shape is also going to be normal. Their means, pretty straightforward. The sampling means is the same as the population means, and so we get 26 and 25. And then for standard deviations, remember, what we're gonna end up doing is the sample distributions end up being the standard deviations of the populations divided by the square root of the sample size. And again, the reason why it's the square root is because up here, um, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And so we end up getting standard deviations of 0.6 and 0.91. Why is that important? Because we're gonna start subtracting these because here's the next question. Suppose that we took a sample of 25 students in, uh, from AKHS and 30 from PHS and found the difference in the sample means, difference being obviously subtraction, um, describing the sampling distribution of the difference of mean scores. So we're going to take um, AKHS minus PHS. In practice, it really doesn't matter which one you go, just make sure you follow whatever the questions are saying. Um, so the mean, it would seem to make sense that we're gonna go ahead and subtract these two, just to subtract the two sample means. So this would mean that the AKHS scores are a point higher than PHS. So the averages should be like that. Standard deviation, now, Remember, whenever we did, and this is, we did this back with combining things, um, whenever we do standard deviations or combining those, we have to square them first to get the variance before we square root them. We can't just add the two together. So that's why we're doing this. So we take the standard deviation of AKHS squared plus the standard deviation of PHS squared, combine them, get the sum, take the square root. And last but not least, the shape. It should hopefully, if you were looking at this, if both samples are normal, then if you're doing the subtraction, you should also get a normal um, answer out of that as well. Now, a couple of things here, let me point out. Um, so this one right here, okay, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna say, all right, the mean of the difference of the two samples is equal to mean of the first sample minus the mean of the second sample. And technically, yeah, there's a transitive step, excuse me, so yeah, transitive step here where you're technically saying x bar one and x bar two, sub two, um, and then since those are the same as the populations, we just jumped right to that. And then over here, I'm gonna actually do this in pencil. Get a little bit of a finer tip here. Um, so the standard deviation is coming out to be this, right? The two sample distributions. And we're saying, okay, so we're going to take, and again, we're going to come back to this up here. We're going to take standard deviation over square root of n1. So we're going to square that. Should we actually make that? Oh, that is, okay. And then plus the glare had me thrown for a second. And we get this. 
Now we're squaring both of these. Remember what ends up happening when you square a fraction, both the numerator and the denominator. So this is actually going to then simplify. Sorry, the battery on my microphone cut out. So where we filled it, where that started to leave off, um, we got up to here, we squared everything, and when you simplify, remember you square both the top and the bottom of the fraction, and so that leaves us with both standard deviation squared, and then the square root of the sample size has just become the sample size. So that's going to be our simpler setup for the formula. Okay. So down here, they ask you to calculate the probability of a sample of 25, aka HS students. Um, the probability, yeah, probability the random sample of 25 AKHS students has a higher mean ACT score than a random sample of 30 PHS students. So again, normal curve, our mean is one, there's zero, we're going bigger than that. So the z-score, mean minus population mean, all divided by, or sample mean minus population mean divided by the standard deviation, which, and again, all of this we got up above. When you calculate this out, it gives you a z-score of a negative 0.92. So you know it's going to be relatively large because this is not that big of a z-score. We're just about one standard deviation below the mean. And then by table A, this turns into 17.88%. And since we're going to the right, one minus that. And we get a probability of 0.8212. And again, you can do normal CDF there. Just make sure you write out all the parts. So with that being said, that wraps it up here. Let's go ahead and we're going to formalize this all over on the next set. And um, I'll see you over there. Bye.